With the season of winter fast approaching, not only is this a great time to break out Christmas decorations, it's also a great time to catch up on some reading material, right? If you can't do much work out in the garden, if you can't, you know, um, get too involved with planting due to the cold weather, you can always recap, touch up, and, and learn some things, right? Sit inside and, and make your time valuable, right? So this is the start of a new series of book reviews. And today we're going to be reviewing Carrots Love Tomatoes, a book by uh, Luis, Luis Riote, some, some sort of French man or, or something, I would presume, or maybe a woman, um, not too certain. I ended up, you know, seeing seeing the book from from another YouTuber who who I watch, and um, I thought it was interesting. You know, it was an interesting concept about companion planting and stuff. So um, I purchased the book, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed reading it. I think I think the book was tailored a little bit more towards beginners. However, I think this is really a book meant for everyone. Even though it would most benefit maybe let's say like you know a great book for a kid or something who's who's just getting into gardening this would really pique their interest um even for for somebody who's you know even like the master gardener this it has some really interesting concepts in it that um can really branch off into into interesting interesting research topics or points such as saponins being good soil amendments right in that Things like, let's say, the china berry. Their saponin content can can help amend the soil in some way, and it, it didn't necessarily go into great detail about that. It was more of just you know, this could be a thing type type situation, and you know, it it really got me thinking. I I never would have even guessed that that could have been something that would have happened. So now I'm you know I'm wanting to revisit all of my china berry experiments and topics and everything you know and and go down a whole rabbit hole there so a lot of like really weird things like that like um it was talking about lightning and rain and and you know the the uh, relationship between electricity and and uh, nitrogen in in the uh mother nature circle of life yada 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 right kind of like brushed over the you know just a just a light coating on the topic like it does most of the things in it um but yeah so lightning can dump like thousands of pounds of nitrogen into into the surrounding area just from that that electrical charge because you know like the the air is like 85 percent nitrogen so supposedly this helps release or make bioavailable this nitrogen in the air into the soil and it said even to um it might be possible to like place metal rods in your garden to um help you know add nitrogen into your soil or something <laughs> you know so it, it would be interesting to see like due to static electricity let's say right like the just the 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 energy in the air like ionosphere or something i don't know you know i'm not an electrician uh but put put metal rods into your garden around some tomatoes and then the other tomatoes obviously you know not put any metal rod in there kind of like a grounding rod and then see if that has an effect on the growth of the plant you know, there, there's some really, really, you know, that's that's not a beginner thing. That's that's going into a whole different um, realm of gardening. So, you know, it, it covers things like that. And I'm not going to spoil any more, but, you know, there's some interesting things for even the, the adept gardeners. And then for the beginners, right, um, it'll give, like, examples and different layouts of gardening, right, where it takes into effect companion planting and things like that, you know, um, planting castor beans, for instance, to deter moles, like every five feet, you know, that, uh, it's a bit, a bit of a mid-range gardening technique. Of course, you know, you do have to worry about rice and in the castor beans, and, you know, it, it, it warns of that and stuff too, but, you know, garlic and onions and all of the, um, those kind of plants to deter certain pests and which fruiting things can introduce yada yada yada. And even like sacrifice sacrificial um, trees to help get birds away from your like cherry trees, right? Plant a mulberry over off in the distance, and the birds will actually prefer the mulberry. You know, so very very interesting things in this, as well as really um, what else do we have? Let's see. It talks about nutritional value as well. It just it 
it appeared it appeared to me to be a very very functional book. There wasn't any um. There was, I guess, a little bit of like. Mm. The book the book didn't necessarily back up, you know, what it was saying with claims and and you know, research papers and all that, but but it. Some of the things is just kind of common knowledge, right? Like public domain, like that. Pollinators can can um, benefit, you know, certain plants or whatever. A conjecture for the book would be like, oh, I can just go online and look up companion plants for garlic, and find out, you know, what 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 companion plants can go with garlic. And that's true. That's absolutely true. However, um, it's almost like with with a search engine or with the internet, you can only look up what you have the idea to look up, right? Like, if you're planting tomatoes, you can look up companion plants with tomatoes, but you wouldn't necessarily, um, you might not find what's in the book, you might find a whole certain different set of answers to that. Or, um, you won't ever find up, you, you won't ever stumble upon the internet necessarily upon, um, like, can lightning have an effect on plants, you know, if, if you weren't, like, re looking up that exact topic. And, you know, the YouTube suggestions obviously can help you with that, but, yeah, so it, it, it just gives you somewhere to start off. It gives you a stepping stone, and I find that to be very, very useful for really anyone. I mean, you're, this has something for everyone in it. I think it's a great book, great read, and inexpensive. And um, I'm sure there might be online versions, maybe even for free. I'm not sure. But anyway, good book to check out. Gotta have for anyone who's, who's into gardening, you know. Really nice. So anyway, this this book is um, so this book is great for anyone, whether you're just starting out or you're an adept master gardener who's been doing this for a long time. Really, really interesting things to check out and try, and um, it really covers it covers an incredible amount of, of information, whether it's about companion planting or you know different techniques in the garden or the functionality of different trees such as the Osage orange as a um, hedge tree to prevent like wind or you know act like as, a, as like a natural barbed wire you know r real cool things like that it goes far beyond the traditional um, way of agriculture that a lot of us are probably used to from what we see online so check out the book go to read and um there's going to be plenty more book reviews to come. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.